This is a simple yet awesome paper, rock, scissors game that you can actually make that you're actually going to code. Let me just show it off. So I got a rock, I got some scissors and I can click and oop, I won that round. I lost that round paper. Boom, 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 boom. Cha. And the great thing about this is you can add Spock, you can add a lizard if you want to. It's pretty straightforward. It is just paper, rock, scissors. But what it does really, really well is it gets you involved with Unity, with understanding how Unity works and that basics. The best way to learn this stuff is just diving in and doing it. And that's what this is going to allow. This is a perfect first project. And yeah, I'm just going to get started out with the tutorial part. I should note that I will link all of my code in the description as long with the assets. The assets I use are Creative Commons or Public Domain. So let's just dive in. New. And shockingly, I'm going to name this Paper Rock Scissors and Create. <clears throat> All right, and here we are. So first off, let's go ahead and change this scene name. I'm just going to call this. There it is. Game scene. I'm known for creativity. All right, game scene it is. And then let's go ahead and asset wise, let's right click and do create folder and sprites. OK, I'm going to minimize. Well, shrink this down for a sec because here we are with the sprites that I have all ready to rock. And here's my game window. So I can just pull these in, of course. And I'm going to, let's go ahead and go into sprites. And I'm going to select all three of these and just drop them in paper, rock, and scissors. And again, all of those are either public domain or creative commons. I got them off of Wikimedia Commons, and they'll be in the description as well. So scenes, sprites, so far so good. Let's go ahead and make a folder for our scripts. Right click, folder, scripts. Okay. And then let's add a canvas. So right click up here, UI, down to canvas. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. All right. And now let's add a player to our canvas. So I'm going to grab the rock spite and just pull it up and drop. And that is looking good. Let's rename this player. Okay. And then let me go ahead and check over here on game. Ah, uh, yeah, we don't want free. We want 16 by 9 the most common somewhat standard aspect ratio nowadays so i'm going to zoom out here by scrolling out and let's move this around a bit i'm going to have this player well on this side right there is looking good so negative 4.5 sounds good to me all right and then well, we want paper, rock, scissors. So we want to be able to move this player or to change this player when the game starts. So let's go ahead then and start adding code. And I'm going to actually end up putting all of this, all the script, all the code we need in this single file because it is a smaller game, a great starter game. So I'm going to call this game script. Okay. And may, usually I would call it like player script if it was tied just to that player. But it's going to be used for a lot of things. I'm going to call it game script create. Okay. And then assets game script is going to go into scripts. Not what I wanted. <laughs> ah, scripts. There we go. There we go. And let's open it up. And this is it. Excellent. So what are we going to need here? Well, we actually won't need start or any of this. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then what I will need, though, is I'm going to need a sprite. Um, renderer object. And then what is it going to be? Well, it's going to be the player sprite. So I could say player Sprite renderer. I know that's somewhat long, but that will do just for clarity's sake. 
And then when do we want to change the image? When do we want to change the player sprite? Well, on mouse down. And mouse down is a pre-made function. It's a pre-made method that is available to us. So when the mouse is down, let's go ahead and give our player. So anything we say public, right now I'm saying public sprite option. Now that I've made a public variable right here, that's going to be available to us. Let's see if I can do split. That's going to be available to us now on our player. So click here and here we are our script. Let's make sure to save this. And now it's going to pop up right here on our player, this public sprite option. And there we are. So public sprite option. And now let me just pick a sprite. So it starts as basalt, let's say scissors. Okay. And click. And there we are, we've set this option to be scissors. So now I want to use my player sprite renderer, we need to grab this, we're going to use an on awake function or an awake function. And this will perfect. And the awake function auto is going to execute once the item once that object once the screen or scene is ready to go. So that's what we need. And let's go ahead and do player sprite renderer. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I'm just gonna call this player sprite. Okay, it is the render of it. But let's not type all that player sprite. And then is going to be equal to what? Well, we need to get component. And what component do we want to get? We want to get the players sprite renderer. And it will default to the player because that's where the script is. Um, that's what the script is referencing to that's its first item of reference is this player. So we can just say get component sprite render and it's going to grab our sprite, it's going to grab the player sprite, the player sprite renderer, right? And right now the player sprite is rendered as a rock as this basalt rock, right? But what we're going to do, let's say on mouse down now that we have this set up, we could do player sprite dot sprite because remember player sprite is only the renderer of it so we need to say hey sprite render grab that actual sprite and what do we want to set it to let's set it to option because i know option must be something i said option right here so let me save all this and let's see what this does oop and it's not working because i always forget we need a collider and i'm just going to use a 2d box collider for this and there we are, it will flip over once I click. Okay, pretty cool. However, that's not enough things, we need it to randomly assign different stuff. Let's first add the other option. So right now I only have it one thing that it can flip to. Let's make sprites an array. And I'm now going to rename this options. Now down here, I'm going to need to put options and I'll put one for now just for filler. So now I can st store multiple sprites in this array, and it will be the three sprites that are needed in our game. Sometimes it takes a second here. There we are. And what size three. And now I can go ahead and do rock, paper, and scissors. Okay, so now I have my three elements, right? And now let's say int rand equals zero rand plus plus. So this random number, and then I'm going to add one to it each time just to test all this out. And now it's going to air out. Yep, because there's nothing left. It says I hit the end. Scissors was the last thing. All right, great. That is what we need. Now we want this to actually be random though. So for that to be the case to make it actually random, we're going to be using something different here. Okay, we're going to use the systems random number function. 
And I mean, it it's an imitation of randomness. Obviously, computers can't actually be random. Well, maybe not obviously, but they can't. Dot random, boom. All right, so this is what we're actually gonna have for the random number, okay? And then I'm just gonna name a second thing here, int p index for the index that we're gonna use, all right? And so now what I'm gonna do is down here, I'm gonna use p index and set that equal to random dot next, okay? And this is how to keep random uh, unique and continuing to function. We're gonna use the method of next, the built-in method, and just say random number zero to three, and we're gonna leave the um, our static random alone, right? We're just gonna be calling this method on it. We'll assign the results to this index. So now it will get a random number zero to three, and then it will be used down here. Okay, let's test out, see if this looks more random at this point. It's hard to know because you could click on it and there's only three options, but it looks like we're going just fine. Great. All right. So what is the next step? Well, we need an opponent. We need a enemy, I guess. And to do that, we are just going to go ahead and let's say sprites. And I'm going to grab scissors and just drop them right there. And I'm going to call this one enemy, right? And let's go ahead and set this up. So 4.5, let's make this positive 4.5. That should be zero. Just kind of the logistic stuff. Get them all lined up. And then let's add a component. And what component are we gonna to wanna to add? Well, we wanna add our script to this game script because we want some of the same functionality, three, now make sure when you do this for your enemy that you have the sprites in the exact same order because it's how we're gonna tell who is winning and or losing. And I just did something bad because I think it's rock, paper, scissors. And let me double check, rock, paper, scissors, perfect. All right, so that is looking great so far. And then, all right, so let's set up, now that we have an enemy, let's put in our code here, sprite whoops renderer enemy sprite and again this is just going to be the enemy sprite renderer that's a bit deceiving all right but we have to do with this one is we need to get the game object as well because it won't know it's gonna default to the player for the game object so we need to tell it nope we mean an enemy game object so game object enemy now down here in my awake function, I'm gonna go ahead and say enemy is equal to, now you wanna be careful with this is equal to, okay? So this is just the enemy itself. So we're gonna be game object dot find and then enemy. And it's gonna look for the sprite named enemy over here or the game object named enemy over there and that's how i'm locating this now that i have enemy i can now make enemy sprite equal enemy dot get component and then sprite renderer and now we'll have the enemy sprite as well so what we could do now is up here, let's say enemy sprite dot, get the actual sprite of it, because so that's the render options. And let's use p index again, because we haven't made anything else, just to test this out. Save, 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 and let me hit run. <laughs> so they'll all be the same right now, but now let's make them different. So let's do another int here. I'm going to do e index, which will be the enemy's sprite index. And very similar to this, I'm going to just actually copy that. Copy. And I'm going to paste it right here. Paste. And put an e here. And an e here. And now it will get its own random assignment.
And it will stays the same sometimes because there's only three options. Just like when someone throws the same thing in paper, rock, scissors. Cool. All right. That looks to be working great. So now what? Well, there's a few things. We want to be able to keep track of the score because I don't know if I win or not. So let's make sure to do that. I'm going to go ahead and right click. 2D object and nope, I meant I meant UI and text and I'm going to name this score text and I'm going to put in here wins. Oh, maybe I should name it win. Win text. I'm going to put in here wins so when the person starts they know what it is and let's go ahead and go to it. Yeah, it's going to be way up over here. Now, so this is our canvas and the camera will stretch out and or the camera will show all of the canvas uh, once we hit play. So we don't really need to be worried about this location. It will work out great. Let me just kind of I want this to be big enough to be halfway. Let's do. And then I want my text centered. I want my text very much larger than this. Uh, and with, let's do it with height. It will disappear if the height is too small. Um, okay, so maybe 36. Eh, let's do 32. And then I'll go with bold. I would like a, for winds, I'm going to go with this bluerish color. Yeah. That is great. Now I'm going to just losses and let's go with a redderish color. One other thing before I want to do, before I forget, is if I move these, the text are going to move. So this change with screen size. So let me click on our text here. And what I'm going to want to do is click here. And I'm going to Alt also set position. So I'm going to hold down Alt. And I'm going to say, yeah, you're not moving. I want you here. Okay. And then for lose, oh, we'll get there. And then for lose, I'm going to click on lose. And I'm going to click on this. I'm going to hold down Alt. I want you here. And now, so it pops right back to where it should be, no matter what size the screen is. All right, now we need to go ahead and add the text into our script, into our code. So right here, we're going to add a few things. Let's do public text I'm gonna whoop, no alignment win text boop okay and we're making this public because the user I am but public text oh that's what it's doing lose text okay first we have to add up here you see using unity engine I'm gonna just copy this I'm gonna go down one line I'm gonna paste it and I need to add dot UI let me hit save. Now it will let me use these text components. All right, so now that I have that added, let me head over to our player where my script is all tied in and add win and lose text to that. So win text and lose text. Okay, so now that we have those texts, how are we gonna keep track of wins and losses? Well, and win count is going to be equal to zero and loss loop. Yeah, that's fine. Lose count is going to be equal to zero. Okay. And now we're going to need some type of statement to keep track of those wins and losses. How are we going to know what index each user is at? 
Well, thankfully we have the P index and the E index, and so that should make it relatively straightforward. All right, so inside of this mouse down, I'm gonna go ahead and check, check for who won. Okay, if P index does not equal E index, right? Because if they have the same index, that means they have the same sprite. That means they're both rock, they're both scissors, that's all we would need. We need to stop there. It doesn't matter. That's a tie. All right. So if, if P index does not equal E index, so only if they are different things, if they have different throws, different hands, if if P index equals equals zero and E index equals equals two, right? So if the P index is rock, so if the player has rock because it'd be equal to zero and the enemy has scissors, well, who wins? The rock wins. So what will we do? Win count plus 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 in code is adding one, right? So that means win equals whatever we used to have win equal to plus one. So if it's the first time, it'd be zero plus one, and win would then be equal to one. Next time, one plus one is two. So, all right, else, and I'm going to kind of cheat here. Copy. Paste. So else if the player's index is equal to one. Now, what is one? One's a notebook. One's paper. So paper beats rock. So if the player's index is one and the enemy's is zero, we would need to increase the win count. Okay, I'm going to copy this now because now I don't even have to write else and paste. So what's the last thing? Well, what if the player has scissors? So if the player's index is two, what does scissors be? Well, that would be paper. So that would be a one index because paper's element one. And we would want to count else. So if none of those are true, that means we must have lost. So that means the computer has something better than we did because we just checked every scenario we would get a point and we know we're not tied. So if none of those are true, lose count needs to go up by one, okay? Now we need to make sure we are updating the win and the lose count. So to do that, we just wanna go down here, okay? And then after all those ifs, let's just make sure our win text dot text is going to be equal to our win count dot to string. We need to make sure to turn this into a string and not just an integer. So it's readable text dot text. So we're grabbing the objects, the game objects text, and we're going to set it equal to the lose count dot to string, turning it into a readable string. So we can set it equal to something we can put on the screen. All right, that's looking good. Let me hit save on all that. Let's see what we have. Ooh, paper beats rock. Tie, tie, lots of ties. Ooh, paper beats rock. Oh no, two to one. Tie, tie. I win, paper beats rock. I lose. Tie. Oh no, we're not doing so well here. Rock, oh no. All right. And so there are a few fun things we can change up a bit, right? Um, let me go ahead and... Mm -hmm. You know, that all looks good. I was thinking that maybe I would do 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, and then same for the enemy. And then I'm going to change my background color. There we are. And to change that, I'm just going to go to main camera, solid color. It's going to do something. These lines. All right. Important stuff. And one more time. Boom. One. True. Tie. Oh, no. Tie. Tie. Yes. No. Ooh, I'm winning. I should pause when I'm winning. And we have a fun little paper, rock, scissors game. So 
Ta-da! I'm actually kind of addicted to this already. Um, I will post all the code, all of that. That's all of that. It will all be in the description. I hope you were successful. I know you were. If you made something cool, you should comment about it below. If you're still watching this, make sure to hit like. Make sure to hit subscribe. It gives me warm fuzzies. It gives butterflies wings. And it's cool and stuff. Again, all the codes posted in the description along with the assets. So I'm going to continue my winning streak, I think.